Hello, everybody. Welcome to another uh, webinar of the Media Education Lab. I'm very happy uh, to have here uh, Sylvia Nemeth and uh, Borbala Timar. Um, I met uh, Borbala in the Azores um, when it looked so long ago. I think it was three months ago. Um, and it was great as a round table to hear about this amazing project. So as I heard about it, I said, OK, we need to do a webinar about it for our uh, community. So here we are, and I'll let them take away. So here you go. So good morning, everyone. We are really very happy to be here, and thank you for invitation. And uh, uh, just a few words about ourselves. So I'm an educational researcher in Hungary and working for international projects as well. And uh, together with Borbara, uh, we are in the last two years, we have been working on, on this uh, project, what uh, we would like to show you. And uh, this is in the development of the phase still. Uh, so for us, uh, your, your questions and also your uh, comments would be highly appreciated. And I just let introduce Borbara. Thank you. Hello, everybody. My name is Borbella Timer. I'm a media literacy educator in Hungary, uh, and I work for a, a governmental agency here called the Digital Child Protection Strategy of Hungary. Uh, and also, I'm a PhD candidate uh, in a Hungarian university working on uh, digital child well-being. Uh, so now we're going to share the presentation and we're going to talk about the project a bit deeper. Okay, I think we're good. We see the presentation. Okay. Uh, yes. So I, I'm going to start. start okay. Uh, so uh, the idea behind uh, this project was that uh, uh, we would like to develop uh, a tool which is uh, able to to measure a kind of the individual online vulnerability of of a dedicated uh, child. Uh, as I, I told before, uh, that was uh, uh, the proposal of, uh, of this governmental agency, Driver, uh, which uh, ordered research from uh, various institutions and develops educational projects. And the idea was to develop this measuring tool, uh, which uh, which would be possible to to help individual children to 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 minimize uh, online risk and also to measure children in groups and uh, to uh, uh, to to develop uh, help uh, uh, kind of kind of uh, group help uh, tools also. So. Uh, uh, the main process was that that uh, first we we developed the, this questionnaire, which was a two-step project, uh, and then we created twenty different profiles. Uh, this tool is for children between uh, twelve and fourteen years, uh, and we have now a huge amount of uh, uh, children who made this questionnaire. So so we realized that all the all children can be put in one of these uh, 20, uh, 20 profiles. Uh, and now we are on the step that uh, we are start to plan 
uh, kind of profile specific uh, interventions. Uh, these are the institutions uh, that worked uh, together uh, in this project, but I think I told this uh, before. So Sylvia is on behalf of the Data Docs Center. So uh, what is a bit more <laughs> interesting is, is about the research. So we started the work in 2021 and we did a kind of action research uh, with uh, vulnerable children uh, living in uh, what, I don't know, what, 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 should you help me? Uh, um, yes, that, um, so it was a small group of children and they live, uh, uh, so these are vulnerable children and living in so-called, we call it children uh, flats or children houses. So it means that uh, these children are under the protection of the state. So they don't live together with their parents, but uh, somehow because of different reasons, uh, uh, they they live in these these flats. And it was a really small uh, kind of micro sample with 34 participant children, and they were not just children, but teenagers as well. And we started to test this whole process and, and the questionnaire and the methodology with them. And uh, um, just, uh, just uh, two sentences on this sample that uh, we we had a hypothesis that maybe that this group of children uh, would be really um, uh, rejecting this type of methodology, but we were wrong. So they were absolutely actively supporting this whole process and they were uh, absolutely interested in this whole methodology, in whole um, work, and they supported us uh, really much. Uh, so we used a, a bigger a methodological toolkit that in in uh, in the validation phase because we tried out drama pedagogy workshops we tried different uh, uh, design, design thinking workshops and and different things and focus groups uh, with these children and and all data based on all data we uh, we finalized the questionnaire what mm -hmm. we used uh, so we spent uh, two days uh with these children uh, two times. Uh, and that was the first step to, to develop uh, the questionnaire. And the second phase, the validation phase was uh, online. So uh, by analyzing the results of, of the pilot action research, uh, we made a final questionnaire and then uh, more than 300 uh, participants uh, made uh, the test and then that was the time when we were able to 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 create all the 20 profiles and now we are going to show how did it work so the the survey had uh five sections uh the first one is a kind of psychological background uh we uh, observed their self-esteem, we made a personality test, and we made a screen, so-called screen addiction test. Uh, the second part is a digital well-being questionnaire, uh, where we uh, ask them about the, the satisfactions and frustrations they feel online, uh, talking about their competence, feeling their feeling of autonomy and their feeling of uh, connectedness uh, online. Uh, the third section was about the risk. In this case, we focused on conduct and contact risk and we used, uh, we used existing questionnaires on gaming disorders, social media addiction, social media anxiety and body image concert. Uh, the fourth part was uh, a bigger part, a different, a huge part on uh, exposure to online bullying. Uh, and this was a tool uh, that Sylvia and uh, her colleagues uh, developed a few years ago for a different project. Uh, and and uh, in, there, there are some situations and students have to answer to the questions about that situation. And that is the way that we uh, measure uh, their exposure to online bullying. 
And then the last part is about media use habit and parental control uh, habit. Uh, so on the next slide, uh, if you're interested in it, uh, uh, we, uh, we share all, all the detailed uh, description of, of this uh, questionnaire. And yes, I forgot to tell that the online bullying exposure was based on the, the Global Kids Online Research Toolkit, but it was a, a, a Hungarian version of it, and it was a kind of uh, a bit different. So uh, uh, I think we can continue. Okay. Um, so, so this is kind of the conceptual framework of, of this tool. Uh, it's, it's almost the same, but, but, but uh, it's very important to understand the structure behind the questionnaire uh, because uh, we made the profiles by using the psychological background and the digital well-being part of the questionnaire. And that was where uh, the, the 20 profiles were constructed. And what we see is that they are highly connected to this online risk exposure and, uh, and all the other uh, background information. So, so this, these uh, profiles are really work and really uh, it, this is an easy way to, to recognize uh, uh, someone's uh, online vulnerability. Siri, would you like to? Say yes, something? yes. And I would like to add something to this uh, uh, graph or this table because um, I think that uh, the uniqueness of this whole research is based on the idea that not only the online risk, uh, risks is uh, investigated, but we think that somehow the psychological background is equally important. So that digital well-being and psychological background make a kind of starting point for this whole profile making procedure. So what we did, we tried to, uh, uh, so we tested that what kind of personality features and what kind of digital uh, well-being features of children or clusters are overlapping. So we created clusters from this personality test answers. We created clusters from digital well-being uh, answers of children. And also we used these variables of online risks, media use, and the demographic uh, uh, backgrounds of children as a kind of uh, additional variables for, for this. And uh, when we, if we go back, so I show you this slide again a bit. Uh, so when we piloted this research first and we tried to uh, formulate a kind of toolkit or not just we we didn't know in the beginning that it will be a kind of survey toolkit a, a questionnaire we, we thought that this would be a toolkit with qualitative and quantitative uh, methods and and tools but finally it was really really shocking for us in a positive way that uh, if we uh, use uh, if we just uh, shorten this questionnaire and we use these types of uh, measuring tools, which is uh, listed here, then this is possible to see the connection between the psychological block and between the digital well-being block, and also with other variables in a way that uh, distinctive uh, profiles can be uh, somehow uh, defined. And we are not sure, so this is one of our questions for you, that uh, is it a good idea to say that these are profiles? Uh, we can say that these, these are groups of uh, with, with uh, distinctive features, but uh, we, we use as a kind of working terminology this profile, and we uh, call it vulnerability profiles. And you see here that these are the basic personality clusters which we created, when there is a, a child and these this is a small table down here uh, this one when uh, we just uh, show you that uh, what is uh, how many uh, students from this 306 uh, uh, 
uh, number sample, how many students belong to, for example, to uh, personality cluster one and digital well-being cluster A. So these numbers, they mean that the first, the number shows the personality cluster number and uh, the letter, it shows the digital well-being cluster and uh, so these uh, uh, these students were grouped here and you see that which is the most frequent from this very small sample because this 300 this is this is also a small still a small sample and um, so here are the clusters so the loud which is a kind of endangered a uh, group of uh, children, the quiet, which is also in danger because they can be, um, they have, I will show you a bit later on that what kind of features they have. Uh, and we have uh, um, a personality cluster free, number three with a low level of vulnerability according to our measures and the last group who is somehow losing the control. Uh, the digital well-being cluster, and this is, uh, um, Borbala is an expert on this part, uh, so she created these names saying that the uh, cluster A is a kind of uh, idyllic users, the B is average users, C are those people who are not so much interested, they use of course these tools, they are online of course, but they are not so much interested like uh, other people. Uh, uh, respondents, for example, there is a roller coaster. I think she will, uh, Barbara uh, Borbala will explain it a bit. And uh, ambivalent uh, users who have uh, ed, whose uh, satisfaction and frustration is also high. Uh, and after trying to match these variables and having a kind of uh, not just quantitative but also qualitative work. Uh, on the on the answers and all the information which was gathered so we tried to find out that how can we characterize these groups in a really understandable coherent way and now we have these textual descriptions about them um, and uh, for example this uh, 2c profile how we call it this is a quiet, endangered, and not, and not so much, much uh, interested in the digital world. So, for example, you see here that according to the um, data, provided data, the children belonging to this group, uh, so their self-esteem is average, they are rather introverted, probably slightly prone to antisocial behavior and be become sometimes abusive. It is characterized by every screen time and may have difficulties with the controls, mainly chats or plays video games online. Uh, being online doesn't really bring joy, mostly in the area of connection and competence. So we can say that if you if we compare with a second group, which is a, a lost control and uh, idyllic group, uh, so this um, they are they are slightly higher. Um, every self-esteem and they are um, emotionally stable but they have psychotic symptoms for example and they are characterized by higher than every screen time and uh, so I just um, picked up some sentences from this but uh, now we are able or not just able but we have created 20 profiles but uh, this is my hypothesis then if we can have more respondents then uh, this uh, uh, the, the number of profiles would increase so these are the basic profiles and uh, I think that there can be somehow uh, new profiles could be added uh, to this these ones um, we will talk a bit about the possible interventions because uh, the idea behind this uh, whole profiling system was to show that how, uh, for example, a head teacher in a school can help the class um, or a class community of children by uh, saying that uh, some of the children belong to this profile, the second group belongs to that profile, and somehow make it possible to help in a proper way. But uh, uh, 
what I would like to show you. So I, I hope that I will be able to do that. Um, that uh, we created. So first of all, this whole toolkit or this tool and the profiles, it was uh, planned and uh, done uh, because we wanted to approach schools with it. But uh, after working on this project, we realized that this type of uh, work can be also very important for parents, so that uh, we made it possible for individual uh, families to get information on their uh, children behavior and uh, that what kind of profile they belong to and we created this is a this is a very first uh, version of this tool so i i try to open it i i hope that you will be able to see um, online and that how it looks like so i try to share it again my screen uh, and what we now do that we ask uh, uh, interested parents uh, to visit our web page. Unfortunately, because this is a local pilot, so this is still in Hungarian, but I try to show you just the structure. So the title is that uh, it is an online behavioral test for children, and we this is uh, our target group is between uh, uh, eleven and fourteen, and uh, so we uh, created a very structured uh, questionnaire with personality statements and and questions. So this is the biggest, the, the first big block. This is uh, this is these are. Uh, questions regarding the personality of children and their habits. Uh, this next yes, I'm one. sorry. Uh, let me uh, just. Uh, yes, just, uh, uh, you, you can uh, uh, translate it with Google Translate online. Mm -hmm. So uh, I just try it so it works. So, uh, or probably I should share it because now yes, I please. Did, uh, Okay, okay. So... I stop. Okay. And please do that. Okay. So, uh, can you see it now? Yes. Okay. So, now you can continue. Okay, but you can put it. No, no, it's okay if you... If you... <laughs> Okay, so this is this first block is about now you see in English these these questions um, that what kind of social skills these children have, what kind of uh, personality they have, what kind of habits uh, they have in their free time, for example, what do they do, what do they prefer doing, like um, reading, or talking to people, or different things. So all these uh, questions are coming from a validated questionnaire. So it is this, uh, our toolkit uh, is uh, constructed by uh, international validated blocks. Uh, and the next, please, if you go down for the next one, so that uh, and this, these are statements, and we ask that how much uh, the respondents uh, agree with that. Uh, and this is about the uh, self-esteem and competency. The next one is uh, that there are uh, situation descriptions and uh, um, and also not just situations, but uh, some online behavioral uh, statements. And they can decide that how much is it true for them. Uh, and also, this is about online play. This is about um, their personal frustrations. And uh, so if we can just go down and down for you to show these, these blocks. And this is about using uh, social networks. Uh, and uh, uh, these are statements, which is, uh, I think, uh, yeah, this is this part, for example, this A, this is uh, from coming from the Global Kids uh, questionnaire. So this this was a bit uh, tailored for, for our use. Uh, and 
again. So it, you will see that these are uh, rather scales. And uh, for example, this is the body image uh, anxiety part of the questionnaire. So these are the parts that we uh, that we show before. Mm -hmm. This is the online connection part and bullying. And, and this is the, the, the bullying story part that we also mentioned before. Yes, so these are uh, these stories. Uh, I think it's interesting that these stories, they were created based on the focus groups. Uh, from our uh, pilot research. So these are uh, those uh, stories which, which happened and which was told by, by uh, focus group children. So this, uh, we were interested uh, in the solution and we provided different uh, answers and intervention times types for children based on the focus group discussion. And I think so we can share this link with you but uh, what is important that after filling in, which usually takes 40 minutes or sometimes um, it can be between 20 and 40. So we uh, created an algorithm which uh, is able to analyze this uh, very, very uh, quickly. So based on our uh, ideas and when a child uh, fills it in. After nine minutes, uh, uh, she or he gets an answer sheet. And we haven't started to work uh, on that uh, because we have this uh, ethical issue that um, we wanted to provide uh, the answer sheet to parents uh, and also to a respondent child. Um, but there were many questions about it, that how is it, what is the good solution to show it or not to show or to send it to the psychologist uh, counselor at the school and she will be able or he will be able to share it. So it's, it's still open questions. But uh, if, um, so we created a really, I think, visually a really uh, good looking um, uh, answer sheet which uh, we can send in a pdf format uh, to to the parents so it arrives into the uh, mailbox of the parents after uh, writing uh, or filling in this questionnaire and uh, we are at this stage now so we are still interested in this uh, uh, the follow-up of this whole work because uh, we are trying to uh, collect the expert answers for the for the next stages and if we just uh, uh, just finish our presentations uh, so I, I show again that into this presentation we put uh, this uh, fact sheet uh, I make it a bit bigger in a minute. So this is the fact, fact sheet uh, which arrives or could arrive into the mailbox of a, uh, of a parent. Uh, just... So our idea is to develop different kind of answer sheet for the child itself for for a teacher and for a parent uh, but currently we are working on that kind of ethical issues which uh, Sylvia would uh, mention because uh, 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 we definitely would like to uh, focus on children and children's autonomy and and we we would like to to, to them to be the main uh, partners in this, this project and to help help them and not uh not 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 uh to, not to give information for parents and teachers which are not uh uh 
not in, not not uh, help them to have the children, and uh, that's why we created this kind of profile description because in this way we can talk about the child's online vulnerability uh, and not to give out uh, personal information which probably uh, appears on the questionnaire. And just one sentence that on the other hand, so you see here that, uh, for example, this was a, um, a testing of a child. And uh, according to the data, it is it shows the, the scale limits that what is the minimum point and what is the, the maximum point and what is the average uh, based on our sample. And it shows, for example, that from uh, one perspective, this child is absolutely endangered. So we created a description about it and we, we have this information sheet for, for parents. Uh, so this is a big question, for example, that based on our uh, data set, so this child needs immediate uh, uh, support. So this this is this is really a big question that how to do that. So we say we can say that uh, with this uh, very vulnerable children in a in a in a danger, we should act immediately and send this sheet, or just use the profiles. So this is this is a big question. And if we just uh, as a kind of final uh, slide, if we go back to this a uh, possible intervention uh, uh, part. So we were thinking about, and we are still thinking about um, in these uh, six types of interventions. The first is that how to support the mental health of children, confidence and self-control in workshops, for example, or with different tools. Uh, this uh, family or school and adult control perspective is the second one that how to raise awareness and media literacy, and how to support the empowerment of these vulnerable children. The fourth one is, um, of course, the safeguarding and technical security of um, being online. Uh, how to support, and for me as an educational researcher, this is always a big question, that how to, how to support children go offline and how to provide them really exciting activities at school and at home to uh, to support uh, this uh, uh, offline time of them to be be longer and uh, what kind of digital experiences and opportunities could be provided in order to uh, use internet safely and and uh, having a kind of productive online time so this we were thinking about these four types of interventions and um, I don't know if uh, Barbara would like to add something to it as for a final no, no I think we just uh, we can show again the example uh, that yeah. how how an uh, example kind of intervention pack is uh, uh, developed so so if we're talking about a definite profile not all the interventions and not all kind of interventions appear, but uh, connected to the uh, results of the questionnaire, uh, uh, definite suggestion type of intervention are offered for a special child. Because for example, if we see a child who plays too much online games, then there will be a lot of uh, different reasons why he or she is doing it. The questionnaire is uh, able to, to reveal the motives and based on that motives, we are able to offer the uh, kind of proper interventions uh, for that specific child. So I think that, that So I, I offer um, that we'll have a discussion since we have here different experts that join us. Um, and um, we can have instead of the breakout room, just have a discussion how long it takes. Uh, you have 25 or 24 minutes. Um, so um, Hosanna, Davina, Maria, Jen, um, you're welcome. If you have any questions, I know I have several questions, but I'm sure you do as well. So I'll let you have questions and, and let's have a, a discussion because again I, I've been here 
I've seen this research and I thought it was super important to bring to our community. So I look forward to hearing from you, Davina. Hi, thank you so much. This was a really nice presentation and the attention to detail was amazing. And the entire journey that you took us through, the pilot and then the entire thing is just split. Thank you. Um, I wonder if uh, this is just a thought that I was having. If you could take the results of this and then go back and maybe have a smaller, another pilot um, as a group discussion with young people or, or even you know one-on-one -on -one, um, interviews to sort of see what they think, how they responded to their uh, the, the questionnaire and now is there something that they want to share with you? Because I feel like there are a lot of young people who are just lurkers online, but just by that lurking, um, they learn a lot. And they might be introverts, so they don't feel like they can say something or do something online, but they end up following a lot of, um, you know, either people who are famous, um, or, you know, within their area of interest. So say, for instance, this is a young person who wants to be a footballer, a professional footballer. They might end up following a lot of, you know, football-related athletes or football-related accounts online. So they might not be interacting with them in the way in which we think an extrovert would, but they're still taking away something valuable. So I feel like if you could, I know that, you know, you were looking at qualitative to begin with, but then the quantitative aspect kind of took over. So just, just thoughts about that, if, if you had any. May we react to that for Is it can, can you hear me or no? Yeah, yes? yeah, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Uh, so just uh, I I uh, totally agree with that. So I uh, think it it would be really important. And just the one thing that we analyze. So before uh, before just starting to develop this tool, um, and during this research phase. We also analyzed the data, which was uh, collected um, uh, by this questionnaire as well, or the pre-questionnaire. And it was amazing that it was nearly 10% uh, of all these children or young um, teenagers who used the internet for a kind of constructive and producive way. So, for example, making videos or, or creating something new. And uh, the majority, the high majority of, of the respondents, they just uh, used it for communication. They used it uh, uh, for watching films or what you just mentioned, following people. So it was absolutely, it's interesting to see that this is a Eastern European or Central European sample of uh, teenagers. And this is uh, absolutely the same uh, what you just mentioned or described. So it's, the pattern is, is very similar. Uh, may I ask a question? Uh, you mentioned uh, demographic uh, data. So uh, I think uh, uh, it, about rural and urban uh, belonging of the children, uh, uh, where there are some differences or some percentage. And do you find that uh, maybe uh, children, nevertheless, they are from rural or urban uh, zones are in the same situation because they just can't divorce from media or there is a, a slight difference or, or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I start answering and then uh, Bori will uh, add things to it that uh, we didn't say, but uh, what we did that we just, uh, we also piloted the answer forms. So it means that we asked, we we used four types of uh, methods to get answers for uh, students. It means that uh, it was an online and offline uh, questionnaire and also with, uh, with uh, mentoring help and without uh, a help. And it, it made difference that uh, those children and teenagers who filled it in online, they were much more honest and their answers were much more relevant, I think, and, and complex. 
so we we in the beginning we thought that it is better or it was better to ask uh, a person to help them but it it wasn't the case so i think that uh, uh, it is better to fill it in online and there was no difference what you asked so there was no difference between the urban and uh, small settlement children or rural children. So it, it was the same. And our pilot was in the rural area as well. And we also piloted in different schools. So we piloted in, in a, or tested in a settlement with one school. We, we uh, tested it with a settlement of many schools. And also in Hungary, it's a big issue to having... Uh, uh, Roma segregated schools as well, where which is dominated by Roma children who are uh, socially um, multiply disadvantaged, and and uh, we we had this uh, answer that they used in the same way the phones for for example mobile phones or or the online uh, situation was nearly the same as in in the capital for example. So it's it it was uh, it was uh, nearly the same answer from from all of them about the usage, for example, or the personality traits. The difference was that uh, in one phase we asked the answers from the parents as well, and the parental behavior was different. So that what the the fears of uh, of uh, multiply disadvantaged parents was much different from the fears and and uh, and um, uh, what he, they mentioned as a kind of threatening thing a thing uh, for their children it was completely different and uh, that's why we wanted to test uh, the online risks with the concept of the parental behavior. Could you just Thank add you. That something? was my, my next question, and you answered, uh, you have already answered it. And so uh, I, I would like to ask you, since it is uh, 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 governed uh, by the government institution-led, uh, your, your project, um, yeah. uh, do you have any plan to, to implement it in in practice, or do you have some... some, some um, connection with the um, uh, pedagogical office or something like that, could you practically use uh, the results? Yes, what you... yeah, yes. Uh, so, so yes, it was started as a, a government-led uh, idea, but, uh, but now uh, it, uh, there is no, no, uh, no governmental foundation on this project so our idea is to 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 apply to uh, international grants and to develop it that way and uh, uh, we already won uh, one one uh, interreg grant so we are going to uh, go for the next step uh, in I think uh, next spring uh, with children in Hungary and Serbia, so we will have, we will be able to 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 go one step uh, step further. And just for the for the previous question, I, I just would like to mention that on the pilot research we did interviews and uh, and and it turned out that that the. Uh, that there is no difference between uh, children in, in a different part of the country. So, so, so the uh, media use, the platforms they use, the, the, the celebrities they follow, they are almost the similar uh, in, in a rural and urban uh, children. So, so, so for me, that was really interesting that, that uh, if, somebody is able to connect to the internet then he or she will have the, the same same online experience wherever he or she live in Hungary so so this is the the digital divide is 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 here is by uh, by the tool and the internet connection thank you could you transfer us the, uh, the uh, maybe the address uh, where we can approach to your research is it online? Can we find some data? It will be nice to, to, to put in, in messages. 
Yes, yes, and and also, so uh, it was supported by the gov governmental agency, but uh, I'm leading a private research institute, which is in, absolutely independent. Mm -hmm. uh, so we were partners in in developing this, and uh, uh, we tried to develop this individual tool that how to use it and go on with it, and also to support the classroom ca classroom practice. Uh, so I think because we work with uh, teachers and, and schools um, on a daily basis, so I think um, after visiting the, these classrooms, this, it would be really important to have this tool in practice because it's uh, really easy to use. And I think that the teachers have so many difficulties with, uh, in defining the, the main uh, problems with uh, in a group of 25 or 30 children so it's that what kind of problems they have um, online and all these things and it it makes it much much easier so we can of course share it with you and um, one more thing that uh, we we made a pilot after this uh, covid uh, area and uh, and uh, we realized that uh, when these uh, uh, children in the segregated zones or having really uh, with very poor children, so if uh, they were provided a kind of uh, internet connection, then they immediately uh, <laughs> knew what to do and, and did the same like uh, in the uh, capital, for example. And it wasn't valid for the school because um, they had a different uh, school activities, but the online the online activity was the same. So it's it it was quite interesting to see that. I was wondering if you could talk more about uh, parental mediation. Was that uh, self-reported on the questionnaires by the children? Oh, this is how my parents mediate my social media use or whatever. Or was was there another exercise with the parents as well? Yes, yes, it was. Uh, yeah. So all data was coming from the children. So we didn't uh, ask the parents to um, fill in the questionnaires, but uh, we tried to ask uh, different questions that um, the the. Uh, the idea behind this block on the uh, parental behavior was uh, to map that how uh, supportive the parents are, how approachable the parents are, and uh, do they have um, any huge control over the activity of children. So we, we try to test it, that how it works, that uh, and what kind of consequences uh, these types of parental behaviors uh, have on the children's uh, uh, online activities and usage and the time of course so it 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 so it it tested that and we we try to prepare a paper about it because uh, we think that this is really important especially nowadays to see for parents that what kind of uh, behavior what kind of consequences have in Hungary, families are really bad in this parental mediation stuff. So we have some some general research that shows that that we really have to improve uh, on this topic. <laughs> Just to follow up, if I may, um, is generally uh, based on your experience, or maybe if you would want to speculate. Uh, generally, parental mediation, is it um, relaxed or uh, is it more infused by techno panics? Because what I've seen in my uh, work in India is people are just scared about uh, smartphones and social media. Mm -hmm. And while you mentioned that demographics did not really have that much of an effect on the children in your study, in my case, it, it sort of did because access to devices or access to internet was mediated by, you know, restrictions or resource constraints. So maybe if I were to speculate, parenting styles for the children in your study might be mediated by demographics. So if the parents feel like they might not have enough resources, they might have certain restrictive rules about devices or about the internet for their children and then that sort of has a snowball effect 
Yes, yes. I think, uh, yes, we have we have a kind of similar impression uh, because um, in uh, poor communities, so parents were much more strict about the usage and because they don't have, uh, uh, in many cases, internet on their own, so children can use it in uh, afternoon schools or in the school or, or public spaces and uh, parents cannot control that or they don't have knowledge about it that how they how their children are using these uh, things so they are much more threatened and they are they they uh, they just uh, shared uh, their fears with us much more than uh, the other behavior in the capital or in towns or in the middle uh, class families so i think the mediation um so we we should uh, make a research on that further. So it was just a kind of side uh, research of of this whole issue, but uh, it seems to be one of the major things here that how we could help uh, parents and also uh, the children uh, through through the uh, informing the parents. So we we obviously we should continue on that. As we come to a close, we have like five more minutes. I want to make sure, uh, Maria, if you have any question, or Jen, I know the answer to your question you put in the chat, but... Um... And main, yes, Jen. Oh, thanks. Hi. Um, hi, I just wanted to say I, I'm really impressed with the research. I think it's great that you guys are... Um, really looking into this in, in these specific ways. And it, it makes me really hopeful that, um, you know, we can figure this out and guide our kids to um, make better decisions. And maybe we as parents and, and youth workers can model better <laughs> decision making around how we um, utilize social media, you know, whether it's as a tool or for entertainment or what have you. Um, but I'm, I'm really interested and I'm excited to see where this goes. Um, so I hope that uh, you know maybe through the media lab or whatever, um, you know I can I can stay up to date on what you have going on. But um, thank you for sharing this today. It's it's really interesting. It's helping me think about things in a in a different way. So I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And um, I I would like to say if you have any idea that how all us together can continue with that one, so please just write us because. Uh, we think that this is a really important uh, subject and, and uh, uh, we try to find a solution uh, together and it would be really important to have a kind of international effort on that and, and to use it in different languages and, and uh, tailor and, and uh, shape this, this uh, toolkit for, for, for the practical usage. So we are absolutely open for sharing this and, and working with people on this uh, tool. Yeah, and I also would like to appreciate uh, for all of the speaker because I think all, uh, the project is very inspiring and I believe it's applicable to a various cultural contexts. So thank you very much for the sharing. Thank you. Okay, so as, as we're closing this webinar, I don't know, Sylvia or Bala, if you have anything to, to say as closing. We just would like to thank you for the opportunity to share uh, our research and to gain new ideas because uh, we, we kind of uh, really love this project. So, 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 so we are always open for new, new insights about it. And, and on the, the web uh, page, you have also the information about uh, Sylvia and Robella, so you can you can reach out if you have questions, if you want to share your thoughts. I see Jen put her email, so you can be in touch with her um, because this is very, very important as we use with our students and for our students to understand their use. So again, thank you so much, all of you for participating, Sylvia and Borbala for offering and sharing your amazing work. Um, thank you and see you in another uh, webinar. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you.